let's just say Cole Palmer FC. I don't even care anymore. Bring it on. Oh my God. What an incredible, incredible record breaking performance. All right, welcome everyone back to American Blues Podcast. Let's talk about Chelsea Brighton 4-2. It should have been 4-0 except for Sanchez's crazy mistakes. But you know what? All that out of the way. Let's talk about the man who ran the game, Cole Palmer. My goodness. People said he's been quiet this season. Can he can he live up to the insane stats of last season? And you know what? This kid is just getting better and better and better and if not for Jackson's finishing today I think Palmer would have had like easily seven goal slash assists this game but ah man I so desperately wanted him to join the five goal club but so close if his just right foot was just a little bit better (laughs) just a little bit more accurate he would have gotten that fifth goal but you know what just absolutely unbelievable performance i could not believe it and i'm so happy he was able to do it at the bridge get the fans back into the team like the bridge was it actually sounded good today even on tv it sounded loud people were into it and like how can you not be but let's just real quick go through palmer's goals first goal all jackson and you know what i thought after his initial miss where he ran through and kind of dinked it over to the goalie and hit the bar. I was like, ah, oh, maybe it's just not, it's not going to be his day. But no, no. Jackson, great run, unselfish, found Palmer, and he was never going to miss from essentially middle of the box. First goal. Second goal, incredible run by Sancho. Give and go, gets brought down, clear penalty. Palmer, easy, Pfft, never a doubt. And then third goal, my God. God, this came out of nowhere. I didn't even know he could take free kicks like that. (laughs) Why hasn't he been taking our free kicks? I don't understand. He can do anything. That ball was like 30 yards out, top right, unstoppable. Like you could have two, three, four goalies. Nobody would have stopped that. Incredible. I was was in shock at this point. I was in absolute shock. And then even the fourth goal, again, great, great play by Sancho. What a great vision. His little through passes are so good. They're perfectly weighted in the perfect position. And Palmer, just instinct from a really tight angle, finished near post. I mean, one, goalie's goalie's fault. But two, just what an incredible finish. Caught the goalie by surprise. Yeah, 4-0. And you know, at that point, the game was essentially over. Brighton still has some chances, but I think they were just absolutely rocked by that performance. My God, absolute world class. I think Palmer easily, easily best player in his position on the planet. I don't think there's anybody that can match him. And you could call him one-footed. You could say maybe he's had a little bit of a quiet start to the season, but it doesn't even matter. Like his stats for this season are already insane. And not only that, first player in Premier League history to score four goals in the first half of a game. Just like... What can you say? What can you say? He's just, he's incredible. And again, if Jackson just had better finishing, he had so many great passes to Jackson, especially in that second half, just again and again and again. And Brian just refused to change their crazy, you know, 50 yard line, high line defense. And every single time Palmer got the ball, just instinct pass. And if Jackson just had, ah, oh, just a little bit better finishing, just a little bit better finishing. Man, he would have gotten even more together. But, yeah, I just, I'm speechless. I'm speechless. I I don't even know what to say. That was unbelievable. And then again, I already talked about this, but Sancho, what a, what a signing. Like, his, his technique is even better than I thought. Like, I knew he was good technically just from watching him on Dortmund, and I felt like on United that went kind of downhill. He just never really fit their system, but this system is fitting Sancho perfectly. He's playing on the left wing. He's getting the ball. His close control is like second to none. I think he's actually one of the best on the team for close control, but really it's about that vision, that final ball into that box. Like he is unique. I think he's better on that final ball than Enzo. He's better at that than maybe even Palmer. Like I don't think anybody on the team can match his just perfectly weighted 
final through ball. So what a signing. Just, yeah, he's really nailing down that left wing starting spot for himself and good for him. And I also want to shout out both Malagusto, great comeback from injury. Looks like he's never left, played full 90 minutes. Great for him. And then Cucurella on the other side. You know, he always gets crapped on by Brighton fans. He almost got himself an amazing goal. And just he was a little bit offsides. But today he was everywhere. He was strong in defense, strong in one on one. Even when he was beaten, he had great recovery runs. He's aggressive. He's just everywhere. This this is a Cucurella that we bought out of Brighton. And I can see why we spent, you know, a near world record fee for a left back for him. Yeah, I can't I can't wait to see more of him. I just need him to stay healthy. And even Renato Vega, once he came on, was a strong, solid backup option. Like, we we are just stacked in that left wing possession right now. And I cannot, I couldn't be happier. Could not be happier. And another big shout out, which is obviously like Maresca for telling this team, like, he knew Brighton were going to play this super high line defense. So, like, every time we got the ball, we were breaking on them with pace. We should have gotten way more goals. Even our press, especially in that first half between Maraweke, Palmer, Jackson, like our press was absolutely on point. We made that Brighton defense nervous. And this is probably one of the best defenses in the league at playing out from the back. And, you know, when they played out from the back, they they were on and they gave us trouble. But more often than not, we got our press correct, and that was that was great to see. Yeah, overall, that first half was just complete smash and grab just worldy performance by palmer yeah and then of course the second half after a first half like that usually second half like you just want control like we're already already winning four two like we don't need to go crazy we just need to keep brighton from scoring and then just control the pace of the game a little bit better and i did think we did that and uh, if not for jackson's bad finishing i think we would have won that game even more comfortably now a few negatives i think one glaring glaring negative is man sanchez like i gave you praise early in season when you proved us wrong but this game two goals he gave away for no reason first one coming out for that punch never gonna make it just should have stayed in goal would have been easy save but then the second one this is the one that i was worried about this is what he was doing time and time again last season just these horrendous passes out from goal to just nowhere and today just for no reason we were comfortably winning 3-1 3-1 and he made us nervous by going up 3-2 just giving away a goal to Brighton for absolutely no reason and you could tell after that he was done he was not about passing out from the back anymore every time he got the chance just hit it as long as possible and even his long passes today were just to nobody I actually I don't think I remember a single long pass making it to a Chelsea player it was either directly to Brighton or just completely out of play and that, that stuff makes me nervous because when Sanchez is nervous, that means Fofana and Colba are nervous. That means the entire defense is nervous, and we can't have that. Like, we can have one game where you're making mistakes like that, but if there's a second game like this, I think he needs to come out. I think we need to give Jorgensen a run in the league because we just cannot. We, we, we've, seen, we've seen this game, right? We, we've seen this play already last season, and we cannot have more of it. Another negative. Jackson's finishing my goodness man like he had so many good runs and this is like the enigma of Jackson right like he's so good in build up he's so good in the press he's so good at getting assists like you can tell he and Palmer are on the same wavelength they know where each other are going to be at all times they know when to press together that's why it's so hard to say and Cuckoo should start over Jackson but when you miss like three four five like clear chances it's just difficult it's just difficult. I feel bad for Nkunku because clearly Nkunku's not going to be the same presser, the same build-up player that Jackson is. But Nkunku would have finished some of those chances. You know he would have finished some of those chances. So there's a there's such such a give and take with Jackson and Nkunku, right? But look, Jackson's got nobody blamed by himself. Like uh, you could tell he was very disappointed when he was subbed off. But like, come on, man, you just you missed too many good chances. You had your runs, so. I suppose the only good thing with this, with him as a striker is that he never gives up. He will always make that run. He doesn't just sulk, right? This isn't like a Morata where he misses one chance and he sulks the rest of the game. No, he keeps trying. And that's what you want from a young striker is to keep trying again and again and again. 
but dude, you've got to be better on your finishing. You've just, you've got to be better because <laughs> we can't expect Palmer to score four goals every game. And another semi negative is Maroike, great in pressing. I think there were several times where he was just unlucky, but there was one counterattack where it was literally three on zero. Like, I don't really count the goalie because he wasn't even in a good position to stop the shot. And somehow, Maroike ignored the three open players and took it on himself to miss. I mean, that's like a pure Sterling kind of move. And thank God we were winning pretty comfortably at that point. But like, dude, like <laughs> you've got to be a little bit better at making decisions like that. You know, uh, <laughs> I would not disagree if we said Pedro Neto should get a run of starts if Maduike keeps being selfish like that. And then finally, I just want to say, I think the Brian player, Estupinian, I think that's what he's called. I think he is damn lucky to not have gotten a red for bringing down Maduike in that first half. Like it was borderline, borderline yellow and red. And I think either way, you could have made a case for it. He was clearly the last man, but there was another person that was coming on. So maybe they would have gotten a chance to defend, but... I don't know, man. That was that was very. He was mm, that close, that close to a red card. But overall, my main thing is just for the first time in three years, I am looking forward to every Chelsea game. And not only that, when we go behind, I'm not worried. I'm not panicked. I don't instantly go, "Here we go again." You know, it's that's fine. The team has goals. We can score goals. We can come back. I'm comfortable. And that is all down to this manager and our players. And really, you know, now even our recruitment team, like we look like a team. We look like a legitimate team every game. Even if we're giving away stupid goals, we still look solid in defense. People are doing their jobs in defense and midfield. And our attack is just getting better and better and better. And if we just had a slightly more clinical striker, man, this team, this team is going to go places now. There are some people already saying, are we in the title race? It's hard to say that we're not, you know, we just, but I still think this team is young. We need to not get caught up in that and put too much pressure on ourselves. We need to just take it game by game, right? We can only beat the game team that's in front of us. And that's what we need to do. Just focus game by game. And if we can do that and we keep this streak going, then who knows? We will be in the title race. And at the start of the season, how many people would have given us that? Almost nobody. But the important thing is not get too caught up in it, not feel too much pressure from the outside. It's just to keep doing our thing, right? When we were shit, all we have to do is keep our head down and work hard. And now that we are good, we need to do the same. Keep our head down and work hard. Take it game by game. Take our chances. And this team is absolutely going to go places. So I cannot wait for the next game. Peace.